Hey everyone, I'm Travis Spivey, join my son. Foreigner Spivey. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our awesome science videos. Also, scan the QR code in the top left corner of the screen to contact us and explore more of our awesome content and material. In today's video, we will explain the importance of water and how it is cycled throughout the living and non-living parts of ecosystems. So, so let's, let's do this. Our learning target for today is, I can explain the importance of water and how it is cycled throughout the living and non-living parts of ecosystems. Water is essential to all living things on Earth because virtually all biochemical reactions take place in water. Water can dissolve almost anything, so it also provides an efficient way to transfer substances between and within cells. The water cycle, also known as the hydrological cycle, describes the continuous movement of water on, above, and below Earth's surface. As it cycles, water moves from one exchange pool or reservoir to another. In different parts of the cycle, water exists as a liquid in water form, solid in ice form, or gas in water vapor form. Therefore, the water cycle includes several physical processes by which water changes states. These processes include evaporation, sublimation, transpiration, condensation, precipitation, deposition, runoff, infiltration, and percolation. Now that's a mouthful, so let's break these processes down into sections starting with evaporation, sublimation, and transpiration first. As water passes through the water cycle, it can change to the gaseous state via three different processes, evaporation, sublimation, and transpiration. As you can see in the following diagram, these three processes move water into the atmosphere. Evaporation occurs when water on Earth's surface changes to water vapor. When the sun heats water, it gives water molecules enough energy to escape into the atmosphere. Water evaporates from soil on Earth's surface as well as from bodies of water. When salty ocean water evaporates, it leaves salt behind. Sublimation occurs when ice and snow change directly to water vapor without first melting to form liquid water. Sublimation also occurs because of heat from the sun. Transpiration occurs when plants release water vapor through tiny pores and leaves called stomata. Plants take up more water through their roots than they need for photosynthesis and other processes. Much of this excess water is given off via transpiration. Now let's move on to condensation, precipitation, and deposition. The relatively low density of molecules of water vapor causes water vapor to rise up into the atmosphere. As the water vapor rises higher above the Earth's surface, it cools and condenses on tiny dust particles in the air. Condensation is the process in which water vapor changes to liquid water, forming water droplets. If enough water droplets are present, they may form a visible cloud. If the droplets become large enough, they fall to Earth because of gravity as precipitation such as rain, snow, sleet, or hail. Most precipitation falls into the ocean because ocean water covers much of Earth's surface, close to 70% to be exact. Eventually, this water evaporates again and repeats the cycle. Some frozen precipitation becomes part of ice caps and glaciers. We call this deposition, which is when water vapor in the atmosphere changes directly into ice such as snowflakes and frost. It is important to know that these masses of ice can store frozen water for hundreds or even thousands of years. Now let's take a look at runoff, infiltration, and percolation. Precipitation that falls on land may flow over the surface of the ground. This water is called runoff and it may eventually flow into a body of water. As water flows over land, it dissolves minerals and carries them across Earth's surface. Flowing water also causes erosion and deposition of eroded sediments. These processes reshape Earth's geological features. Some of the precipitation that falls on land may soak into the ground and become groundwater. This process is called infiltration. Infiltration happens when water soaks into the soil from ground level. Infiltration then leads to percolation of water, which is when water moves down through the soil. As the water percolates into the deeper layers of the soil, it reaches groundwater, which is below the surface. Groundwater may seep out of the ground at a spring or into a body of water such as a lake or the ocean. Some groundwater may be taken up by plant roots, while some of the water may flow deeper on the ground to an aquifer. In summary, there are several components of the water cycle that cycle through the living and non-living parts of ecosystems. Without the water cycle, processes such as photosynthesis and cellular respiration would cease to exist because they both depend on water to occur. Quick question, 
What would occur to plants and animals if the water cycle was suddenly stopped in an ecosystem? Take two minutes to think, pair, and share out with your teacher and classmates. We're ready to hear all of your brilliant responses. And that's our video for today. Now let's test your knowledge to see how proficient you are with explaining the importance of water and how it is cycled throughout the living and non-living parts of ecosystems by taking our video quiz. Use your electronic device to scan the QR code at the top right of the screen or you can click the link in the description box below the video to take the quiz. Remember, 80% or higher for proficiency, record your results on your proficiency sheet, and if you don't get it the first time, you better keep going because it's not over until you win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click that bell icon, and also scan the QR code to contact us and explore more of our awesome content and material. Peace and have a positive, productive day. Sorry about this, sorry. Oh. Oh.